In part one of my creek ecosystem overview, we looked at the wildlife which can be found at the top of a creek food chain. Moving down the list, we are now arriving at the organisms in the middle part of this energy pyramid. Animals in this group are prey for some organisms and predators to others, so they are extremely important in a healthy ecosystem. The first creature we will talk about, while it may come as a surprise to some people, is the water snake. Now there are many different species of water snake found throughout the US, but the one featured in this video is the non-venomous northern water snake. Now snakes are right smack dab in the middle of this creek, okay? They do have predators, those would include larger snakes, uh, birds like the heron, especially a young northern water snake would have many, many predators, including even fish. But at this size, they'll be preying on frogs and smaller fish, maybe even tiny birds. Anything really that they can get in their mouth and that won't fight, including smaller snakes, they will eat. But they also are still prey for a top predator like a great blue heron or a hawk or an owl or anything like that. So snakes make up that middle structure in the ecosystem. They are extremely important helping to maintain levels of smaller carnivores, herbivores, and providing food for top predators. So these, that's why these are important to the creek ecosystem. To show why snakes are so important, I created this graphic. The food chain shown here is very simplified, and in nature the interactions would be much more complex, but it does serve as a helpful visual example. In the first image, we see a balanced food chain, in which a population of minnows feed snakes which in turn feed a heron. However, let's say human beings are scared of the snakes and have them removed or even killed. Suddenly, the fish have no predators and the heron has no food. The heron will be forced to move on to a new habitat with a new food source or risk dying. The fish population will explode and soon there will only be fish in this ecosystem. That means that a disease which affects the fish population, or drought which limits water, could completely decimate this population of minnows, leaving the creek virtually devoid of life. Besides their ecological niche, northern water snakes are worthy of conservation because of their incredible swimming ability. I actually took a dip with this specimen to show you this creature power in action. Now northern water snakes are excellent swimmers, and you see when I get him in the water just like this, he can actually go completely under if he chooses to. Now, they underwater, they swim just like snakes move on land. They do kind of this S shape, right? And they use that long lung that they have to provide some buoyancy. As you can tell from this footage, they are able to swim above and below water, a skill that many reptiles are not able to utilize. Holding their breath for up to several minutes at a time, a water snake can stalk prey like fish and aquatic amphibians that other predators do not have access to. This increases their likelihood of survival immensely. Now while not everyone is a fan of snakes, you should never attempt to harass or kill a water snake that you see in its natural habitat, as they are only aggressive if they feel threatened. To learn more about water snakes, check out their video here. One small step down from snakes, in the lower middle part of the food chain, is another surprising entry, the bullfrog. I know I have already included these amphibians as a possible prey source for every carnivore on this list, but once these creek dwellers reach a certain size, they are definitely considered high-tier predators themselves. A mature bullfrog can and will eat any living thing that it can fit inside its mouth. That includes fish, insects, small frogs, young snakes, and even mice. In some instances, Reports have found that bats, birds, and scorpions are also included on this voracious eater's menu. A six foot plus jump in some insanely strong stomach acids make catching such prey items possible, and usually if something finds itself in the mouth of a bullfrog, it's game over. If you want to find a bullfrog, it should not be too hard during the warmer months of the year. During the day, you may get lucky and find one by chance but true frog hunting is done well after the sun sets. 
These amphibians are almost strictly nocturnal predators and breeders. They can see both prey and predators better at this time, and the sun will not dry out their sensitive skin. Travel down to any water source with available prey, and shine your flashlight on the border of the land and the water. Odds are, you'll find at least one of these awesome animals. To learn more about bullfrogs, check out their video here. Well everyone, that's all for the second part of my creek ecosystem overview, where I covered animals that can be found in the middle of the food chain. Make sure to stay tuned in the coming weeks for part 3 of this mini documentary, in which you can learn about the bottom levels of the creek food chain. If you enjoyed this video, please make sure to comment and tell me, and if not, let me know what I could improve on. Thank you all very much for your support, and have a wild day! This is Ben Zeno of The Wild Report, signing out.